I want to say something I hope would encourage some people. If you have gone through some things, you've got a solid past, you've got a background, wondering how could God love you? How could God use you? Let me just encourage you, get you to understand this. You're the kind of person that God wants to use. And I want you to think about somebody for a second, somebody who is very prominent in the Bible, someone who's well known, who has been pretty busy in the Bible. As a matter of fact, this person wrote five books. You probably know who I'm talking about. I'm talking about Moses. Moses is someone who you probably won't think that he could should even be compared to you in your life. Well, let me do so right now. Think about Moses. Think about how Moses grew up. I'm talking about before he left Egypt. Think about it. Moses was brought up in the greatest society known to mankind. Even now, when we look back, even comparatively speaking, about, let's say, the United States or any Western culture, Great Britain at its heyday, and compare with Egypt at that time, no country has been more dominating in so many facets of life. Think about how much education and technology that obviously we look back on it now, it's small, but all the things that we do in life, that we build ourselves up in life, the technology, it's based on the education, the systems that were there in Egypt. Well, think about this for a second. God determined in his sovereignty to have Moses born at the right time, in the right place, even when Pharaoh is going out and trying to kill all the male boys of Israel. Here's one that God determined to have him born. His parents put him in this little this little baby boat, and sent him down the river. And who happens to be there? Pharaoh's daughter. And how does this work out? It literally comes about that God has, and let's look at the story. Matter of fact, let's go there. It comes about Exodus 2. Let's start in verse 8. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, go ahead after the the girl says, I know one of the women, women who can nurse him, nurse this boy because Pharaoh's daughter, she couldn't do it at the time. So she takes the baby to who? to Moses' mother. So the girl went and called the child's mother. Now, Pharaoh didn't, I mean, Pharaoh's daughter didn't know that. Then Pharaoh's daughter said to her, take this child away and nurse him for me and I will give you your wages. So the woman took the child. and Think about this. Moses' mother is getting paid by, <laughs> by the government to raise her own child. She's paying Moses' mother to raise Moses. But what will Moses get in return for that? Not just money for his household, But Moses is also going to be educated and trained by the greatest power on earth at that time. Then the child grew up and she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter and he became her son. And she named him Moses and said, because I drew him out of the water. So here we've got Moses' background. Your background absolutely is important. Think about this. Moses' background is certainly going to be used against him, especially in liberating his people. Moses was trained. Moses was intelligent. Moses had some of the finest education, uh, affi- affiliation with the, the greatest minds. Uh, and so now what's going to happen? God is going to use that background as Moses is going to now deliver his people. Now think about that for a second. Think about you. God makes a promise in Romans 8, 28. You know the story. You know the verse. And we know that God causes all things to work together for the good of those who love him. Do you love him? And so all those things, good, bad, or indifferent, especially even the bad stuff, he's going to take those things and cause it to be used for the good of you. Why? For the benefit of his kingdom. So someone that's had a bad past that we would think is a bad past, a solid background, God will use those very things. The things that you went through to train you into being useful for him. God knows what he's doing. I can think about my background and how these little things here even the times that they were unpleasant, how God has used those things to to use me, to bless me, to bless others, or to be a blessing or to be a benefit. And so think about it that way. Whatever you have gone through, I don't care if you're Moses. I don't care if you're Rahab. I don't care if you're Joshua. I don't care if you're Peter. I don't care who you are. If you've gone through something, God can and will use you and use it for the good. That is, if you love him. So if you love him, you can take heart and matter of fact, just sit back and just think about how awesome God is going to use you and your past for his glory. So make sure that you keep that in mind. No, you're not Moses, but he can use you like he used Moses. No, you're not Joshua, but he can use you like he used Joshua. No, you're not Joseph, but he can use you like he used Joseph. And all the different things that happen in your life, he can use you. Why? Because he says he calls all those things 
good or bad or indifferent, to be used. He'll cause those things, as he says, uh, to work for the good of those who love him. If you love him, that's reason to shout. Amen.